question is to the Republicans. Nice uh, follow up to your response. The federal government bailouts of various industries have justified the auto industry, Great. banking industry. Well, I, I was wanting to follow up with Rip anyway, so that kind of leads into what I want to talk about. When you have organizations, whether they're companies or any other kind of group, and they get bailed out. I mean, you have these CEOs who essentially make decisions in the short term, and they're inevitably only good for them in the short run, and then the company ends up on the hook, and who gets, who gets, who finally ends up on the hook for the final bill? The taxpayers do by the bailout. You know, it makes no sense to have some people, whether they're in Wall Street or wherever, have these investments that they're not accountable for. We're not teaching these people to change their habits if we continue to let them get away with uh, short-term investments and the taxpayers are them to keep footing the bill for it. When there's no efficiencies in the capitalist system, you know, you gotta have some accountability. And when you have this system that just promotes inefficiencies where people can make any kind of investments that they would like and they're not held accountable and they get thrown away with these golden parachutes, you know, that's, that's the kind of stuff that needs to end and the bailouts are just gonna promulgate that. You're not gonna end bailouts by continuing to say that certain groups are too big to fail. Are you solving here? Well, uh, do we want the bailouts? No. Uh, the Republicans are right on this one, but that this is socialism. But this is socialism for who? Socialism for the rich. And that's ironical in this system. The <coughs> capitalism requires the state to intervene because as we pointed out, the, these crises are regular, they come back, and they're recurrent. Without the bailouts of the, of the banks of the uh, auto industry, you would have actually seen a million, millions and millions of people out of work. And that's, and this, this is a stark reminder of what kind of system we're living in. At one point, I say I don't want, I don't want uh, bailouts, but at the same time, I know that I am tied down by the system to allow for bailouts, because I do not want to see millions on the on the street. Um, I don't think there's any doubt that the bailouts were an extremely tough and politically unpopular decision. But as I Solidarity said, the bailouts saved 1.4 million American jobs. Those are people like anyone who's in here, that their jobs were saved because of the bailouts. General Motors and Chrysler, who were bailed out, were required to cut labor costs and overhaul their business models in exchange for government loans, guaranteeing their accountability to taxpayers. I think it's extremely important to emphasize that today General Motors and Chrysler have repaid 99% of these funds. And any losses to taxpayers have been substantially reduced from the initial estimates. These companies are now rehiring thousands of workers, and as of 2011, Ford, GM, and Chrysler all became profitable for the first time in seven years. And I'd like to add that the, uh, that the administration supports a financial crisis responsibility fee on the largest financial institutions to fully compensate taxpayers for their extraordinary support in the bailout. Another reason for the bailout is because these industries that we bailed out are key industries within the U.S. They have backward linkages to refineries along the coast and forward linkages to um, the business owner who takes loans from the banks to the transportation system of the U.S. And I think these bailouts will ultimately prove better. Now keep asking yourselves, okay, do we need these bailouts or not? Yes, they save jobs. I mean, look, you're throwing how much money to a business? I mean, you're gonna get jobs out of <laughs> throwing anybody a bunch of money. The question is, is it the most efficient use of our money? Why does the U.S. government bail out a certain region of our, of our, of our country? You know, we're, we're, what about the rest of us? Why don't we get a bailout? If someone gets a bailout, why are they more justified to receive a bailout than us? 
And it doesn't go, it doesn't, the question shouldn't be, were jobs safe? Again, you throw a boatload of money to somebody, <laughs> yeah, they'll create jobs, I guarantee you. But the question is, is it the most efficient use of our taxpayer money? And no, I don't think it is. Thank you. This is your question. Uh, in 2011, defense and related, related spending under the budget line of security expenditures made up $891 billion uh, with uh, the U.S. budget. That's 64% of the discretionary expenditures. Can we afford military expenditures at this level? Having been raised in a military family and as a member of the U.S. Army, I see a need for national security for the U.S. As we pull out of Afghanistan with our goal of pulling out of Afghanistan by approximately 2014, naturally we will adjust to a more appropriately sized peacetime force. But we must also seek to make our national security as efficient as possible. We need to use smart power and strengthen our ties with allies and provide foreign aid to foster stability in four regions by building mutual understanding and creating a future for the poor in these regions so that they aren't susceptible to radicalization by terrorist groups. <clears throat> the we are we are definitely past the days of a defense budget that will continue to grow year after year. We flat out can't afford that. Our economy cannot sustain that. But the question comes, okay, where do we draw the line? You know, we're, we're, in, we're in war right now. Do we really want to not give our soldiers the equipment and supplies they need to carry out the mission that we intended them to do? And the question is, where do you draw the line? You know, I think you're not gonna have any more um, DARPA projects that are just throwing, at the, throwing money out the window on some kind of research, and you know, then that's gonna end. But the question is, how much of the defense can we can we afford to cut right now? And I don't want to send my fellow citizens to some place across the world where I'm tasking them to do a mission and I'm not giving them, I'm not giving them the tools to accomplish it. As long as we give them the required tools to accomplish whatever missions we give them, I mean that needs to be the fundamental requirement towards any defense budget. Having said that, you know. There's got to be some kind of cuts, and it's going to be painful. You know, New Mexico, we focus a lot of our, our a lot of our money comes from the federal government, and why? Because we're we're very militarized. We have Los Alamos National Lab. We got a lot of bases, and that's going to hurt us if they cut the budget. So, you know, while the budget needs to be cut, we do as a state have to make a stand for the things that really provide a big force of our economy here. Thank you, Solidarity. Um, a simple answer to this question would be no, we, uh, we do not need the defense budget to be as high as it is. It needs to be cut radically. We want to get rid of all overseas uh, military bases that take our money from this country and out towards uh, to sustain those bases. If we cut that much that much amount from the military budget, that, that frees up billions of dollars for energy and education and for the, for the bailouts. For the economic crisis. Well, and, and essentially, we don't support the sort of imperialist military policy of this country. There's no reason that we should be um, in the places that we are. There's no reason that we should be fighting wars outside the borders. There's absolutely no reason. There hasn't been a reason since World War II. So yes, drastically. Cut it by 90%. percent they going to hurt anyone here. I have to strongly disagree with the Aggie solidarity for saying there's no reason for us to have wars outside of our boundaries. 
we were attacked on September 11th, and we needed to respond. And we have responded initially with diplomatic efforts, and then military force, and now we are using smart power to give aid to Afghanistan, to help them transition um, to a legitimate government. And I think we can have a viable military and cut spending if we focus on national security and through smart power. And um, we cannot uh, cut all overseas bases because that would be producing inefficient inefficiencies with our coordination with allies. Thank you.